Hello everyone. So today we are going to continue our basic mathematics series where we are going to look at some important basic mathematic formulas and tricks which will help us in our future programs. All right. So today we are going to uh, learn about factorial of a number. Right. So before jumping to coding, let's talk about what is a factorial. So if I say factorial of n, it is represented by this n with an exclamation mark. So this is equal to n. All right into n minus 1 all the way to 1 all right and n factorial means multiplication of numbers from n till 1 all right like n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 till 1 all right for more understanding, let us see these examples. So, suppose our input is 4. So, what would be the factorial of 4? 4 into 3 into 2 into 1, which is going to be what? 4 into 3, 12 into 2, 24 into 1, 24. Alright. Hence our output is 24. Now suppose if our input is 6, so it is going to be what? 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1. So what this value is going to be? 6 into 5, 30. 30 into 4, 120. 120 into 3, 360 into 2. 7 20 all right hence output is going to be 7 20 now how are you going to code this so it is very easy uh, coding part where you will use you know um, a loop where you will multiply where you will have an integer where you will multiply n and in every pass you are going to decrease n and this loop will run until n becomes um, you know equal to 1 okay so this is what the coding part would be so let's try it first let's include header file then using name is std let's have a main function let's have n which will be a user provided number and what we are going to do is we are using going to use a um, function called fact So what this fact is going to do is it's going to have input as a parameter and it is going to um, it is going to you know return the value of the factorial of that number n so for that let's have a you know variable which will show the factorial value and now let's have a loop is going to be i which is going initially going to be equal to 2 and we'll run this loop till i becomes you know equal to n and we'll increase i at every increment all right and uh, now res is going to be what res into i right so what res would look like 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 until i becomes n so 
this loop will run till i becomes n all right and then we will just simply return our value of s so let's try and run this program okay let's take the example values let's have input as 4 and output as 24 the factorial of 4 is 24 as we saw it before all right now let's have 6 720 hence the code is working all right so i hope this was you know clear to you what is factorial and how to find it through programming now let's talk about trailing zeros in a program all right now let's um let's have input as six okay what is output 720 all right and if we have input as you know Ten. Um, then what would be the output? What would be the factorial of ten? So it is going to be um, three six two double eight double zero. All right. So if I ask you, what would be the number? What is the number of is it trailing zeros trailing zeros means right to left consecutive zeros suppose here it is one and if our input is 10 the number um, the number of trailing zeros are what two all right now our task is to find the number of trailing zeros and write a function about it all right now you may pause the video for two minutes and think about the solution brainstorm for a while and then come back to this video for the solution all right now what is the factorial of a number it looks like this if i ask about factorial of in this would look like this one into two into three into until n all right now if i ask you like um how many zeros would be there in this list so i'll simply say that if we find the number of twos and fives as a pair in a number they will result into number of trailing zeros yes because 2 into 5 becomes 10 and any number multiplied by 10 results in a trailing zero suppose if a number is 72 and if you multiply it by 10 number is going to be what 720 right suppose your input is 6 so what would be the factorial 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 into 6 right how many number of 5s and 2s are here 1 5 and 1 2 there would be like 2s here also yes 2 into 2 and 2s here also 2 into 3 but if you have to find the number of pairs of 2 and 5, so it is going to be 1 because there is only 1 5. Alright. So this is clear to you. And there is also one more interesting fact here. That in a factorial, number of 2s would always be greater than number of 5s. You can clearly see 
that even in the factorial of 6, small number, we have only 1, 5 and the number of 2s are 1, 2, 3, 4. So at any point, the number of 2s are going to be more than or equal to number of 5s. So hence the task is, task is reduced to find the number of 5s in this whole uh, uh, trail of numbers. Alright. Now you can see that after every 5 turns, we are getting a 5. Like here is a 5. Then somewhere here we will be having 10. So there is a 5. Then at some point we are going to have 15 where we will find a 5. So we can say that in a factorial factorial number of 5s are going to be what? n by 5 okay these are going to be minimum number of at least they there would be these number of 5s at least so now i might be wondering why i'm saying at least see there is one more number 25 which is going to have how many number of 5s 2 right but since we are dividing n by 5 we will only get 1 and there is also going to be a number 125 here somewhere so how many 5s are going to be here 3 but we are only counting you know 1 so effectively I can say that number of factorials are going to be n by 5 plus n by 25 plus n by 125 and this you know list goes on right so now you might be wondering that how our how can we stop this you know this infinite trail right so if n is you know less than 5 power k we'll stop after you know k minus 1 passes suppose our n here is 27 right so we'll you know find this one n by 5 n by 25 and then but we don't have to compute this because this is going to be 0 right and the future values are also going to be 0 suppose n is 127 so we'll find n by 5 we'll find n by 25 we'll find n by 125 but we'll won't we won't find the other numbers right because there's no point because it is going to be 0 right so this is how we are going to find the factorial uh, trailing zeros in a factorial all right now let's try to code this thing okay let's have a header file here first of all let's have using namespace std let's have our main function let's have n as user defined number and then we'll see out trail of n so we'll have a function of trail which is going to have input as a parameter and what we are going to do is we are going to have a variable int res which is going to be equal to 0 now we will run a loop we will initialize iterator as 5 we will run it until i is you know less than or equal to n and now we'll, what we will do is we are going to initialize i as i into 5 because we saw that n by 5 plus n by 25 hence we have to increase 5 increase i by a multiple of 5 every time now what we are going to do is we are simply 
gonna add n by i to res all right now if i go back to blackboard what did i tell you res is going to be what res n by i so initially res is what zero hence what i can say here is that this thing in the loop represents this because initially i is 5 then it will become i by 25 then it will become i i will become 125 and so on and as soon as i becomes more than n then it will break right so this was it and now what we'll do is we'll return we'll simply return return res right now let's no wait a minute yes now let's try to run this function so we had six as a example input let's have it number of trailing zeros are one right see number of trailing zeros are one Now let's have another example input 10 number of trailing zeros are 2 yes you can say number of trailing zeros are 2 right so here yeah, these are the two programs which I wanted to tell you in this lecture and I hope you uh, got what, uh, what is factorial how to find it and how to find trailing zeros in a factorial so yeah that's it for this lecture